I'm going to show you two ways to get your clips into your timeline, your sequence. Uh, one is by directly dragging it in, and the other one is by way of the source window. So let's do the simplest one first. If I just go over here to A Roll Bud MP4, I can just drag that from the icon and just pull it right into the timeline window. And so this is a good point to discuss the timeline. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So if you just press the plus key, that will allow you to zoom in. If you want to zoom out, you hit the minus key. So I'll mention several keystrokes in here, uh, as I did in class, just because it will make working in Premiere so much more enjoyable because you'll be doing certain things a lot. And if you don't use keystrokes, you'll go a little bit crazy. <laughs> So the first thing I want to do is just increase the height of my track. So you'll notice on the left here, I have three video tracks and I have three audio tracks. So I'm going to turn off the blue squares next to those audio tracks since they are currently empty. Uh, if I want this to be a little bit taller, all I have to do is drag the line at the top of this track up and that will increase the size. And you'll notice what's nice about that is once you get above that, that real skinny size, it shows you a preview of what's in the clip. So if you have a whole bunch of different clips, it's easy to find where you're at just by looking at that little image. Now the audio clip is actually more important for me to be big because I do a lot of my editing based on the audio and you probably will too. So I want that to be taller. So I'm gonna drag the line at the bottom of that audio track and you'll notice that this makes the audio waves more visible and I can see all my peaks and my valleys and everything else that's going to help me figure out where to clip things. So all those peaks and valleys will allow me to choose where I want to make my cuts. So we've got that done. So video track, audio track. Now what's this up here? Well this is the actual timeline. This is showing the time that you are at within the clip. So currently this playhead, which is this guy here, kind of looks like a guitar pick with a line coming off the bottom. You notice I pulled that into the timeline and that this number here changed. So as I drag this across, you'll hear the, the weird sounds that are being made of my father-in-law talking. And uh, you'll notice that this number continues to change. So what do these numbers mean? I don't wanna know. Well, this means a minute. If, if we had hours, they would be over here. This is a minute. This is, these are the seconds, so one minute, three seconds. And then the 23, what the heck is that all about? Well, if you remember, our frame rate for this is 30 frames per second. So this is actually saying, okay, you are at the three second and 23 frames mark. If I pull this slowly, you'll see that you know it will move and, and the more I'm zoomed in, the more accurate I can be with this. But you see I can pull it one frame at a time, so a 30th of a second at a time. So you get to 29 frames and then boom, it goes to four seconds. But what if you wanted it to cut off something at a half a second increment? Well, I'd pull down to 15 and that would be the equivalent of half a second. The playhead and the timeline, very critical that you understand this, this concept and how these work. And you will use this playhead a lot, as you'll see in these demos, to clip to. That's kind of a basic overview of how this timeline works. As we add additional clips, we'll, we'll build on this basic knowledge. Now, let me just discuss a little bit about navigation around here. So when I pull the playhead here, that is called scrubbing. So that's a really good term. Bring that up at a cocktail party and you will have the opposite sex flocking to you. Um, or the same sex, totally up to you. I will now show you how to get around here without having to scrub through the whole thing. What if I just wanna to go to the end of the clip, say? Well, again, I'm gonna discuss keystrokes. So you want to look on your keyboard, on the large keyboards at school, uh, it's the keys right above the arrow keys. And the key you're looking for is the end key. So if I hit the end key, that will take me to the end of the clip. If I hit the home key, that will take me to the beginning of the clip.
If I have multiple clips in here, I can actually use the up and down arrows to move to those individual clips too. So, so that's really helpful. Now, what if I just want to see the whole sequence at once, you know, small so I can see the whole thing in the timeline window? Well, there I hit the backslash key, which is directly below the delete key. And when I hit that, it just shrinks it down, and I can see the whole kit and caboodle, as they say. Well, smack my mama. We got something in our sequence. We're going to leave it there. But let me show you another way to get something in, and that is by way of the source window. So I'm going to go back over here to the project window, and I'm going to double click on that same clip, the icon there for a roll bud. And let me shrink these windows down a bit. You will see that this is basically the same image as this is over here. Okay, so that's great, but they're actually two different things. This image over here is a reflection of what your movie actually looks like. This is just a preview of a particular clip. So if I play this, so I'm just going to click inside my source window and hit the space bar. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Whoa. So obviously that's a little bit that we probably don't want to be in our movie. So I'm going to pull this playhead over here in the source window over. Okay, so right about there is where I want to start the clip. Now, I'm not going to be real specific here because what I want to talk about is just the idea of in and out points. So an in point means where do you want to start the clip plane. So you're going to shoot a bunch of video, and you're not going to use most of it. You're really just going to clip out certain parts to use in your movie. So this is saying I don't want that first part of the clip. I want it to start here. That's my in point. So to establish that, I can click either on this little icon here, or I can hit the I key. So I'm going to do that. Just hit the I key, and that establishes my endpoint. Now I'm just going to randomly pull this over just a little bit, and just say that is where I want my clip to end. That's my out point. So I can click on this icon here, or I can hit the out key. And so the O key, I'm sorry. Um, and so that's, uh, that is all set to go. Now, if I come back here to the timeline, let me just reduce the size of this a bit. And then I want this clipped clip to go down into here. So I can drag this from the picture here, or I can drag it from the project window down there, and just pull that in, and you will see that that indeed has been greatly modified in terms of how much of the clip it is showing. So I'm going to show you in a minute how to do the same thing down here in the timeline. You know, as with all this stuff, there's no right or wrong. There's just the way you prefer to work. And so I'm going to delete this. I do both ways. Sometimes I will uh, clip it in the timeline. Uh, a lot of times I will clip it in the source window before I bring it in, especially with audio. Uh, so, okay, so let's go back here to the timeline. And let me enlarge this just a bit and uh, zoom in just a bit. So I'm hitting the plus key. And so we have the same problem. We've got that beginning of the clip we don't like. So how do we get rid of that here? I'm just going to play this. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Whoa. Okay, pull this over a bit more until I get closer. <laughs> okay, we're, we're still rolling. Okay, shut. So right there, he, Bud says, okay, and then there's a pause, then shortly. So. I want to get rid of the word OK and start the clip at shortly. So that's where the audio really comes in handy. I can be a lot more accurate if I refer to the audio as opposed to looking at the video picture. And so I'm going to zoom in a lot. So I'm just hitting the plus key. And then I'm going to pull my playhead over. OK, short. So if I do it that way, right, just hit the space bar to play and hit the space bar to stop, it's really hard for me to be that accurate. So I'm going to scrub. And so I'm going to come back here and I'm going to pull across this. So you hear him OK. And then what I'm looking for is the SH to start. So right there. Right there. So that's going to be my endpoint for this. His eyes are closed, which isn't ideal, but it's actually going to happen so fast you won't even notice it. 
So now I'm going to hit the backslash key under the delete key to show the whole thing in the window. I'm going to click on my clip and then I'm going to make sure I have my arrow tool selected right here. And then you'll notice that when you pull over the left side of the clip, the beginning of the clip, it turns into a bracket with an arrow in red. And I'm just going to click and hold and drag and that will snap to the playhead. So make sure your magnet right here is blue. That means that that feature is active. And then you can use the playhead as something just to snap to. It makes it very easy. So I've lost the beginning of my film. So I'm just going to click and drag the clip over in the timeline window. So it starts at the zero point. And then I'm going to do the same thing at the end here. So just pull all the way to the end of the clip, zoom in a bit, and you'll notice when you zoom in, the playhead will stay centered, which is kind of nice. Very. Live together forevermore. Thank you. And right about there is where I want the clip to end. So I'm, that's my out point. So I'm going to drag the end of that over to the playhead and hit the uh, backslash key. And uh, we have inserted the A roll. And uh, that runs the entirety of the film. And everything else will end up just sitting on top of it. So that's how you get it in. Two different ways. Totally up to you, which you prefer.